2014 on the same side of the country. And here the recognition is he's done for many years as assistant coach Gavin Williams. Thank you, Wayne. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, our senior recognition night in 2014. Tonight we celebrate a very special group of seven senior basketball players. This group has uh, been very, very special to our coaching staff. Uh, and they put up some great numbers on the hard work for us, especially the last few years where they have captured back to back section champions and a section record of 25 wins and only three losses. Our first senior, JJ Vaughn, number 35. Escorted by his parents, Jeff and Paula Vaughn. JJ is a four-year wrestling battle winner in basketball. Last year he was the second leading scorer in rebound on the section championship basketball team. He was a KSA Disney Classic All Tournament team member and a South Wales Tournament All Star 2013. JJ is a great basketball player for us, but his future is on the gridiron where he was a quad A Southeast Conference All Conference performer in 2013. And he will be playing football at Lafayette. Next season. Good luck, JJ Cohen. Our next senior, point guard Connor Gallagher, number one. Connor's <laughs> 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 best so way by his parents, Paul and Pat and Joe. Connor is also a four year member of the Upper Central and Panthers the squad including uh, a, a strong member of the backcourt for the last two. Connor is team captain this year, and uh, he's also wanting to play basketball in college, although he is undecided as to which school he's going to attend. He plans on majoring in business management. He's also a member of the honor roll. Connor Gallagher. Our next senior, A.J. Gross, number 12. <laughs> Our defensive star, oh, excuse me, escorted by his parents, Adam and Tameen. A.J.'s been our defensive stopper here, a member of the program for four years. He also played baseball and ran track and field for the last three. A.J. is a fine student, a member of the highest honor roll, National Honor Society, and his finals for Student of the Year. AJ attends to, uh, plans to attend the University of Florida or Penn State main campus, where he major, will major in pre law. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Rose. <laughs> our next senior, our starting center, number double, or number double zero, Will Ross. <laughs> Will is escorted by his parents, Frank and Terry Ross. Will has been a three-year varsity participant, including a starter for the past two as a big guy. He's also a captain this season. He uh, has had many, many accomplishments. He's very proud of his experience on the Travel C basketball squad. He's also a member of the French Law and Society and a member of the highest honor roll. Will plans on going south somewhere for college, but he's undecided as to where, and he will be majoring in something business-related. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Ross. The smallest yeah. really for <laughs> Our next two individuals are Zach and Nick Staley. Oh, okay. Those are number 20 and number 32. <laughs> they are escorted by their parents, Ralph and Sue Staley. <laughs> Zach and Nick have been a part of our basketball program for the last four years. Zach has been a three year varsity player and a two year letterman. Also, uh, a very, very accomplished student, member of the High Honor Roll and National Honor Society. He is undecided where he will be attending school, but he will be majoring in business. One is up, one is up. Nick Staley has also been a three year member of our basketball program. Nick is a member of the High Honor Roll. Excuse me, the Highest Honor Roll and National Honor Society. Nick is also a team captain this year. And Nick will be majoring in engineering or business in whatever institution he chooses to attend the next four years. 
Nick and Zach Staley. Our final senior is guard Thomas Steve. Thomas was a four-year member of our basketball program, also the Ramos of the Rare, three-sport letterman. Uh, Thomas was a, a varsity baseball player and also one of the finest golfers in western Pennsylvania. He was a member of a two-time Whitfield Championship golf team and the first ever PIAA State Championship golf team. Thomas is a five time student member of the highest Conroe, a student of the year nominee, and a National Honor Society member. Thomas will be playing golf at the next level at Notre Dame. Thomas Steve. <laughs> on a personal note, on behalf of Coach Holzer, Coach Bennett, and the rest of the coaches and myself, we would like to thank our seven seniors and their parents and their families for all of your love and support and hard work over the last four years. You've accomplished some great things while you've been here, and without you, none of this would be possible. It's been very special, and we will miss you guys dearly, and we hope that you will continue to come around and be a part of our program in the future. Thank you. Another round of applause for our seven seniors, please. Gentlemen, welcome to Upper St. Clair High School. The section is over. The Panthers are the section four champions, but that doesn't mean we've got a great basketball game tonight here. My name is Ben Rudenberg, AJ Kissinger to my left. The Chartiers Valley Colts coming on to coming in town to take on the Upper St. Clair Panthers. Now, AJ, even though the section is over, Upper St. Clair has won their second consecutive section championship. What does this game mean to the Panthers? Well, first off, it's a big rivalry game for Upper St. Clair. It's a game that you want to win for bragging rights. 
for them also going into the playoffs, they need to build momentum. They'll be play, playing against much better teams, like the North Allegheny, Newcastle, Hampton, and this will be a good measuring stick for them going forward. Here we go for the opening pitch. Zach Staley getting the start on senior night. The tip-off will be controlled by Sharkers Valley, bringing up Jared Stewart. Now, AJ, a much smaller lineup here in Chargers Valley that we've seen from them uh, in past years. Spencer Passing, the 6'6", six six, uh, senior last year, has graduated. So what uh, style of play do you think Chargers Valley is going to bring to the table? Yeah, they're going to push the ball real quick on uh, the fast break. They're going to try to make a lot of three-pointers and force up to St. Clair to uh, rush the ball up the court. Good ball movement there from Chargers Valley. The shot won't go. Defensive rebound for Zach Staley. And here comes Tom Gallagher. Guarded by Hayden Herzer. I think they're going to put a little full court pressure on. Thomas Steve for three. And he gets a friendly roll for the first point of the game. Thomas Steve coming off the screen. And that's something Upper St. Clair's got to do. They got to get him open look early. Yeah, Thomas has to make a bunch of threes between him and Wheeler. They need a lot of three points out of them. Chargers Valley is able to score a lot of points. Their leading scorer, Matty McConnell, coming off a 46-point night. So we know we're going to have to get a lot of points on the board to win this one. Yeah, not only 46 points, also added 10, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, and 10 steals, a quadruple double. Uh, there have been some criticisms to his game that he's only a shooter, but uh, I think he's doing a really good job in proving those, those criticisms wrong. He's a much more complete player than I think people give him credit for. Connor drives on Herzer to the hoop. Herzer knocks the ball out of bounds. They stay here with Upper St. Clair. The Colts come into this game with a record of 20 and 1, undefeated in their section. Upper St. Clair 16 and 5, 12 and 2 in section 4. Only loss of uh, the year for Chargers Valley was a one-point loss to Ambridge. So this team, uh, this team can really play. And that's Zach Staley off the offensive rebound. Something that the Staley's do really well. They crash the glass. They have to do a lot of that this game, too, with having a huge size advantage over Chargers now. Jared Tewitt tries to make a move on Gross. A really nice move by Jared Tewitt for the first two points for the Char Chargers Valley Colts, the 5'9 senior. Here comes Gallagher. Over to Steve for three. And he got it, Thomas Steve, two for two. If you're Chargers Valley, you got to get a hand in the face. You can't be giving Thomas Steve uncontested looks. Yeah, I don't think Chargers Valley expected this one from St. Clair. I'm sure they thought we were going to pound it inside, but the starting lineup a little bit different than we've seen, and Thomas taking advantage early on. Connor, good hustle, trying to steal the ball there. However, he was out of bounds to stay with Char Valley. Even now, uh, St. Clair is a huge size advantage, and they have Will Ross and Big Staley usually start the games that can come off the bench. So, any point in this game, up St. Clair should have a huge advantage on the glass and should look to work it inside. My mistake, that was actually a Chartier's Valley turnover. That's the second turnover we've seen from Chartier's Valley. Uh, pretty good backboard. I'm surprised to see that early. And we've got a, a push. Jared Two is right to the hoop and his foul. Jared Tewitt is a senior. He missed all of last year, nearly all of last year, breaking his kneecap in Florida in a preseason tournament. So, I mean, Chargers Valley had a great year last year, but even with Jared, uh, you think that maybe they could win Whitfield's maybe in the States. Yeah, he's uh, one of their best players, a senior this year. Just like McConnell, he can shoot the three, but also attack the rim. That's the first free throw. It's good for Jared Tewitt. It's 8-3, to three, Upper St. Clair, 5.34 to go in the first. AJ Linda. Nearly turns the ball over, but Connor has it now. To the hoop and is fouled by Connor. So far, I think Claire is at the nice job not turning it over on the uh, Chargers Valley Press. It's been a couple of close calls for them if they can limit those turnovers and really help to get into their offense. And coming in, now we have a starting lineup that we're used to, Bill Ross and Nick Staley. Uh, good minutes, though, early on from AJ Gross and Zach Staley. Yeah, they helped that get the lead. Hopefully, they can hold on. Second free throw, no good for Gallagher. Here comes Stewart. 
the transfer from Baldwin High School. Stewart tries to drive, almost loses it. Drives to the hoop again. Just short. Uh, early on, a strong dribbling from Jerry Tewitt. He's getting to the hoop. Yeah, we haven't seen much of Monty McCollin on football on Jerry Tewitt so far. I think not the same player is the content of Jerry Tewitt is the main offense. Uh, Connor Dowdy tries to cross over the dribble on the sophomore Eddie Floor. However, the ball, we got a jump ball. And it'll stay up for St. Clair position. This, this five for short two guy is, that upper second player is three guys taller than anyone they have on the floor. They just have to get the ball inside. Yeah, the tallest guy that's really playing for uh, Chargers Valley is Matty McConnell, who's only six feet tall. So that's something upper second player needs to use. JJ misses the three, here comes McConnell. And we've got a reaching foul called on Connor Gallagher. That's something that we've seen from Connor, just picking up uh, some early fouls on the record. Can't get the foul over here. Yeah, especially tonight, they'll put a, they want to press the entire game, and Connor's by far our best ball handler. And without him, it would really create a lot more turnovers for Chester's Valley. Eddie Floor, the 5'10 the, uh, sophomore, checking the beginning of Star Valley. So he's moving the ball around, too. It's got it. Tries to drive on Gallagher, loses it, and turns it over. It's going to be Upper St. Clair ball. Good defense early on from St. Clair. Yeah, without any inside presence, Upper St. Clair can uh, really extend out on shooters. And so far, they've done a nice job of limiting the drive. Let's see uh, how St. Clair tries to attack the CD defense. They're going to try to establish inside presence. Gallagher turns it over. Here comes four. Nice move to the hoop, no good. Rebound to Will Ross. Uh, early on, not even, uh, not a whole lot of offensive rebounds coming off the CD right now. St. Clair doing a nice job in the defensive line. That's something that they really cannot allow to happen because that is their big, biggest advantage rebounding. Tough turnover there for J.J. Carr just this hand in the pass. 4 3 to go in the first. It's 9 to 4. Panthers lead the Colts. Stewart will bring the ball up. If you're St. Clair, though, you're happy with the way this game's going. You're rebounding well, and you're, you're using your size to your advantage. I think uh, Char Valley playing at AAA now. You know, they've played in quad A these past uh, couple years. This is only their second year in AAA. Uh, maybe not used to the size in, uh, in quad A that Central has right now. Yeah, AAA, you know, this lineup probably is uh, almost the same size as the rest of the teams, but it gets up to the player, they're a lot bigger. The old head fake for Will Ross, he can put the ball on the floor as a big guy, and that's a, a huge advantage for St. Clair. Floor can't finish, he gets his own board. He's going to go out of bounds to Shaw Valley. That's something we've seen all year from Upper St. Clair. Their big guys are, uh, are active and they are athletic, Will Ross. Uh, he, he has that mid-range J, so he has to pump fake, and he can even put the ball on the ground when he needs to. I'm sure Chartres Valley is looking to attack these uh, big guys from St. Clair on the dribble, but they're all pretty athletic. Hayden Herzer, the dribble drive, kicks the floor. He was fouled when attempting a three-point shot. He's going to get three free throws. Early on, we've seen that Searches Valley is not a team you want to foul too often. All of them there could be very good foul shooters. Two have made the first team. Four is already two for two. Matty McConnell has not gotten involved in this game yet, um, but I feel like we will be seeing him contribute. Thomas Steve's done a nice job so far in keeping him away from the basket. He hasn't looked to shoot, shoot yet either. Connor tried to fight Nick Daly, passed a little high. He's going to go out of bounds to Char Valley. But if you're Hoser, you like Connor Gallagher pushing the ball on the fast break, trying to get the ball to your six foot six Nick Staley. Uh, right now he's being guarded by Matty McConnell. It's a six inch difference. So if you're St. Clair, you want to exploit that. Herzer's three, no good. Connor with the defensive board. And here they come on the break. Good look to Con. Kicks it to Steve in the corner. Just rims out here from Herzer. Pass a little long for Floor. 
But he's got Matty McConnell in the corner for three. First points of the game for Matty McConnell, and it's 11 to 9. Upper St. Clair, and early on, both teams want to get out on the break. This is about to be an exciting basketball game they get. That was a really good play by Eddie Fuller. He's saving it behind his back to McConnell. And no matter what circumstance, you can all leave Matty McConnell open for three. Obviously, fast break's not easy to guard, but you want to do your best on defense. Betting the Upper St. Clair lead to two. Here comes Connor. Over to JJ, getting a screen from Will. Over to Nick. Nearly stolen. Here comes JJ in the mid range. And it's good. JJ Conn, the mid range jump shot, to give St. Clair a 13 to 9 lead. To it on the dribble drive. Westover couldn't create. Here comes to it again, guarded by Steve. Westover, guarded by Will. Out to Herzer. Eddie Floor, and he took an extra step. Dragged that pivot foot. Good defense from Nick Staley at 6'6", six six, being able to go step for step with the 5'10", Eddie Floor. Yeah, between Nick Staley and Will Ross, they're guarding guys significantly shorter and a lot faster than them, but their athletic ability, and they're able to cut down on the angles, and they're able to shut down the Chargers Valley guard so far. Here comes JJ. Gets it out to Connor, they're gonna set it up. Con stolen from him by McConnell. Takes it himself for two points. Matty McConnell, he's got five now. And here comes Gallagher on the fast break. Oh really? Nice finish for Connor Gallagher. Wow. Yeah, Connor's going to be huge this game. His composure against the fast break and pushing it at the same time. And there's Jared to it for three. A fast-paced game right now. It's 15 to 14, Upper St. Clair. I can't say this pace favors Upper St. Clair, but they've done a nice job adjusting so far. Andrew Wheeler, by the way, the sophomore, has checked in the game. For Thomas D. Back on that Connor Gallagher layup. Here's Char Valley. You've got to get back on defense. I mean, that, that, you can't be giving up fast break points to Upper St. Clair. It was more of a secondary break off the uh, main basket. They just left too many guys wide open underneath the hoop. 35 seconds to go in this first quarter. Upper St. Clair leading Char Valley 15 to 14. Connor guarded by two. JJ, 25 there. Seconds of the same place we can roll for the last shot here. Good defense though by Chelsea Brown. I'd look to get it inside the real loss, but Kyle Westover is significantly short of it. Five seconds left and stolen by Floor, and he's going to be fouled. Smart foul by Nick Staley after the turnover. Would have been a wide open layup for Jared too. That's a great defensive possession there by Sharkers. Oh, uh, they're, 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 they're very good on the perimeter. They're very strong and, and they're not letting Connor Gallagher buy him. Uh, Jared too, I believe. Here comes McConnell, last shot. Just off the front rim, no good. We're through the first quarter of play here, AJ. Upper St. Clair leading Sharkers Valley, 15-14. Uh, pretty fast paced first quarter, would you say? Yeah, it's not for St. Clair, we said after getting inside, kind of slow the pace down, but it's not as easy as that. Chartier's Valley players did a nice job of denying inside, and you got to continue to move the ball around the perimeter and work it inside. Yeah, yeah as you mentioned, the Char Valley uh, defenders very active on the perimeter, and they're making it tough for St. Clair to put the ball inside.
are back for second quarter action here. Upper St. Clair leading Chargers Valley 50 to 14. Upper St. Clair able to play so far with this fast paced style that Chargers Valley brings. Two of the quicker guards that uh, Upper St. Clair has faced this year. And they're a different kind of guard. They faced uh, top TJ Porter from Obama, but these two look to attack the rim, but they're smaller in stature. Yeah, uh, we've seen a lot of really good guards here in, in Section 4 Quad A. Uh, Joey Mascara from Bethel Park, Johnny David from Mount Lebanon. That's Garrett to it for three, giving Chargers Valley a two-point lead. The thing about a, a smaller lineup for Chargers Valley, you've got five guys who can shoot the three-point shot. That, that becomes tougher if you can. Yeah, we, we do say how athletic uh, Will Ross and uh, Nick Steele are, but they're still not as comfortable out on the perimeter as they are inside. I'm sure Chuckie's Valley is going to look to exploit that. Gallagher puts him on the floor. And goes up for two. Tied the game at 17. Here comes number 20, Hayden Herzer, checking in. Jared, two at holding his knee. Looks like he got hurt in the last possession of the summer mount. That could be a bad injury. Hopefully that's not that knee he hurt last year. He was out the whole year with that. That would be a big loss for Chargers Valley. It's Jared Tewitt, probably the best player on this team. He's limping off to the trainer's room now. McConnell's three off the front rim. Rebound to Andrew Wheeler. And here comes Gallagher. Mid-range jumper for J.J. Khan is good. Gives St. Clair a two-point lead. Back and forth early on, two very good teams. The 16-5 Upper St. Clair Panthers leading to 20-1. Chargers Valley Colts, 19-17. Not a good shot there by Hayden Hayes right uh, he's, he's more of a defensive player. And a guy who can really facilitate the offense. And I think Upper St. Clair will allow him and Kyle Westover to shoot the best he's good. Thomas Dukadis versus the corner. Jared Tua returning to the Chargers Valley bench with a slight limp. Hopefully he can get back on the court. Yeah, the game's been real great to watch so far, and he's been a key part to it. Hopefully he can get back to the real entertaining start to the game. Connor swings it to Will. They bring JJ off the screen. Quick hands there for Matty McConnell, forcing the turnover. He had 10 steals in his last game, and really active hands on the defensive end. Yeah, he's a smaller player, but he's got quick hands and quick feet. And he's a real smart player as well. Matty drives to the boot and is fouled. A really nice crossing for dribble there. Because he's going to the line shooting too. And uh, you don't want to put Matty McClellan on the line. He's one of the best free throw shooters. He is. And I was a little bit surprised how he didn't attack the rim early on in the game. And carried to it out of the game. I'm sure their offense is going to revolve around him. First free throw good for Matt McConnell. A lot of people will compare Matty to his brother TJ, who plays point guard at University of Arizona. But uh, I think Matty is a much different player. Would you agree? Yeah, TJ right now for Arizona obviously is one of their best defenders. He's a real great passer. I think Matty is more more able to attack the rim. I'm sure TJ was a great scorer in his high school day too. But I think Matty is a completely different player. Who knows if he can live up to those standards? Nice pass inside to Nick Staley for two points. You got to use that height advantage for St. Clair. Uh, nice finish there for Nick Staley, but a good entry pass. I think that was Axel. I think that was brother to brother. It's really the first time they've done that. And, uh, nice take by Matty McConnell. With Jared Tewitt out of the game for Char Valley, I think the Colts are, are very content letting Matty McConnell take the ball to the hoop and uh, take over his point guard. Uh, Nick Staley is second. 21 to 20, up St. Clair leads. One free throw coming up for Matty McConnell. That was already Nick Staley's second foul. And, uh, up St. Clair's height advantage is something they want to keep throughout the first half. And he's checking out now for Will Ross, but really foul trouble could be something that really hurts up St. Clair here today. Yeah, you're right. St. Clair's got to keep that height advantage. And uh, Nick Staley cannot pick up that third foul in this second quarter. There's still 5-18 to go. Honor now guarded by Hayden Herzer. Tries to take him off the dribble, but is fouled. And uh, we see that a lot with uh, defenders. They can't seem to stay in front of Connor Gallagher. They're forced to foul. 
He's done a great job early on of attacking the rim. He hasn't made too many passes yet to big guys, but we can expect that throughout the game. Corner in the corner, guarded by Herzog. Wheeler tries to find Zach Staley inside. A little bit of a miscommunication there. That'll result in the turnover. It wasn't a bad idea, but it was a poor angle from the pass. If he would have worked it back around to Connor Gallagher at the top of the key, he would have had a much easier chance of getting inside to Zach. Herzog will bring it up. Over to Ross Wilkerson, the freshman. McConnell being guarded by Wheeler. I think he's going to drive on him. Oh, he's going to pull up. Oh, a really deep three. Matty McConnell right in Andrew Wheeler's face to give Char Valley the lead. The injury to Jared Church seems to have ignited Matty McConnell as he's taking over so far in the second quarter. Connor Gallagher. Three no good. Offensive rebound spot four for Matty McConnell. Looks deep for floor. And a nice move. Nice little hesitation there to get to two points there. It's 26-21, Chargers Valley. Bit of a run here, a 5 0 run for the Colts. Yeah, I just think like Colts just going to settle down and uh, try to work it inside to Will Ross. Once again, quick hands for Matty McConnell for another steal. They're going to kick it out. Westover's got it, now to McConnell. Jared Tewitt sets a check back in for the Colts, and McConnell tees up a three way long. Coach McConnell not pleased with his oh, no. shot selection there, but uh, kind of a heat check for him. He's already made a three about the same distance in this quarter. Yeah, Coach Tim McConnell is not happy with that shot selection. Made one just like that, but uh, when they don't fall, the coach can't be happy. Here comes Connor. Drives and is fouled. A really nice move for Connor Gallagher. Uh, something I've seen him do more this year than last year is, is drive and then pull up for a mid-range shot. He's done that a lot this year and, and, and to a great degree of success. Yeah, last year it seemed like a lot of it was uh, one foot of floaters. This year he's really setting his feet and almost taking a jump shot in the lane and providing a lot more accuracy for him. Connor Gallagher shooting a free throw here, trying to cut the Char Valley lead to two. Just rims out, it's 26-23. Star Valley, Jared Tua is back in the game for the Colts. Jared Tua is being guarded by A.J. Gross. Good defense from A.J. A nice move for Tua, but no good. Rebounded to Will. Here comes Connor on the break. Wheeler in the corner, blocked by Eddie Floor. This guy is everywhere on the defensive end. Great block by Will Ross. Here comes Connor. Oh, tried to find Zach Staley there. I think St. Clair needs to calm down a little bit on that fast break. Yeah, they tried to run at the same speed structure as Valley is. And normally, yeah, up St. Clair has the athletic ability to run with any two good players. But the structure now has a different style, too. Now, AJ Gross guarding Matty McConnell. They've dropped it to it. McConnell in the corner. Three is long. Rebound to Will Ross. Another uh, defensive rebound for Will Ross. St. Clair really doing a nice job in the defensive glass. Wheeler in the corner. No good. Ross tries to fight for the board, but McConnell comes down with it. And to it. Steps out of bounds. It's going to go back to Upper St. Clair. I think Star Valley needs to calm down a little bit, AJ. Yeah, I think both teams are really fired up. There's a big crowd here today, not really much room to sit. And a uh, rivalry game, which is, these kids obviously haven't been in a situation like this all year, and they're kind of playing with the, their mindset. Really impressed so far, AJ, with Eddie Floor, the 5'10 sophomore. He is playing great defense. I didn't know much about him before this game, but he's probably been their MVP on defense so far. Bucket there for Nick Staley, cutting the Colt lead to one. It's 26-25 with 1.30 to go in this second quarter. Uh, no timeouts taken from either coach. This has been a, a 
a pretty quick game so far. Nick Staley's gonna be careful not to pick up his third foul here. Eddie Floor on the baseline drive is gonna be fouled by that's number 31, Andrew Wheeler. Eddie Floor to the line. Star Valley comes into this game with a record of 20 and 1, but they do play in Triple A. You got to think, what would their record be if they played in Quad A Section 4 like Upper St. Clair? Um, definitely a, a weaker strength of schedule for Star Valley this year. Yeah, I think they would definitely hold the round in the section, but I, I don't think they would be undefeated. It's tough to win at Bethel or here at Upper St. Clair, but uh, it's a good test for them too as they head into the Triple A playoffs. They'll likely be the number one seed. I believe they will be. Their only really competition in their section is Montour. Um, a lot of the teams have to get down here in that uh, AAA section, uh, the South Park, the Guffey, uh, really just some, uh, Tri Valley's been able to, to really, uh, to win out, actually. And there's Connor Gallagher, good dribble penetration. Aiden Herzer picks up another foul. Hers has played tough defense, has made it tough on Gallagher, but he's gotten a little bit over, over anxious the last two times he's drove to the basket. Um, Gallagher to the line, shooting two. It's a three-point cold lead. <laughs> Zach Staley and A.J. Gross will check back in for the Panthers for Nick Staley and J.J. Kahn. A.J. Gross for the Panthers. Gallagher getting a second free throw. No good. Will Ross gets the offensive board and goes up strong and the foul. Will Ross. Uh, once again, Upper St. Clair crashing the offensive glass. That's, um, that's a huge disadvantage for Chartier Valley right now. Yeah, Will Ross is playing a great half. Uh, a bunch of defensive rebounds. It's the first time he's gone in there on the offensive glass. And so far, offensive rebounding has been limited by Chartier Valley, but I think Upper St. Clair can continue to exploit that. Free throw no good for Will. Uh, rebounded by McConnell. And I think Sharkers Valley, their offense was uh, going smoothest when Matty McConnell had the ball in his hands up top. I think with this uh, two guard lineup with Tewitt and McConnell, I think it gets a little cluster. What do you think? Yeah, it seems like McConnell's more comfortable when it's just him and four guys spread out. But Jared Tewitt's done a nice job attacking so far as well. As he does there, blocking the foul and Paul Ross. Didn't look like a whole lot of contact there, but... Yeah, it seemed like all the contact was initiated by two in, but it's only Will Ross's first foul. He's had foul trouble in recent games. It's good to see him get through a half without much trouble. The ref right now talking to Will Ross and Danny Holzer. I can only imagine what that'll do about. I don't think Holzer... I think Holzer was asking if... Uh, Will Ross initiated the contact there, and it seemed like Tewitt went out of his way to run into Will Ross, so I think Coach Holzer has a point. When you're as strong as Jared Tewitt with the ball, though, you, a lot of times you will get that call. Yeah, he's been, been great attacking the basket. He, isn't, he had one outside shot that he made, but besides that, it's been all near the hoop. Great short on that first free throw attempt for Tewitt. We are tied at 28 here, only 46, 46 seconds to go in this second quarter. Two free throws missed for Jared Two. It's too bad misses there. You've got to get uh, a little bit of momentum right before the half. Now St. Clair has a chance to take a lead into halftime. Let's see if they hold for last shot. It didn't work out last time in uh, Shorty's Valley was getting the last shot. Eddie Floor just harassing Thomas Steve out on the perimeter. JJ shot, no good. Good defense from McConnell. And we've got another foul. So that's JJ's second. And for St. Clair with already 19 fouls this half. And uh, we stated earlier that could be a problem for them. And uh, a couple of the big guys have picked up. It's actually JJ's third foul. Wow, that's, that's not good. Ninth team foul. That far away from the basket. You, why is there I'm calling intentional foul here? Third pass, maybe? I, I don't know why. I'm not only by himself here at the line. 
nonetheless, he can convert. Two missed free throws from Jared Tewitt. And now his first miss from Maddie McConnell. Sharp Alley blowing opportunities to take a lead in halftime. Bottom hands to second. Good sharp out. He'll one, one point lead. I'm still confused on what the call was. It either a technical or an intentional foul. I didn't see JJ Card say anything, so I guess it was an intentional foul for him. Twenty seconds to go. Uh, if you're St. Clair, maybe you hold for the last shot there. Uh, what do you think, AJ? Yeah, I think that's what their plan was, unless he got an open layup and JJ saw a lane, but not even called it was. Quick to react and shut it down. Eight seconds to go here. Oh, just you had missed Eddie Floor cutting to the hoop. Two seconds. Floor mid range. No good. That'll do it. No basket. We are at halftime. A good first half here, AJ. It's 29 28. Chargers out. <laughs> Thank you. 
back with some third quarter action here at Upper St. Clair High School with the Chartiers Valley Colts leading the Panthers by a score of 29 to 28. Now AJ, Maddie McConnell at 13 points at halftime. What does Upper St. Clair need to do to limit his game offensively? Well, I think it starts with uh, once they get across half court, Jared Toons for bringing it up and they need to deny the ball out of Maddie McConnell, McConnell's hands from the get-go. They've only had three players to score so far and uh, Jared to it, Maddie McConnell, and Eddie Floor. If they can limit uh, McConnell's point total, I think Upper St. Clair can come out on top. Upper St. Clair will get the ball to start the third quarter here. The Wheeler will end up. <laughs> Maddie McConnell will fix the net, and now we will end up. Gives it into Con Connor. Almost stolen by Tuit. But that will lead to two points for Will Ross. Will Ross playing a great game so far, AJ. Yeah, it's been a great start to the half for Upper St. Clair. Nearly a turnover, but they were able to get it inside. Will Ross finishes strong with a smaller defender and Matty McConnell on him. Once again, the tallest guy on the court for Chartres Valley is Matty McConnell at only six feet tall. However, he's, a, he's 180 pounds. He's, he, he's built. And he is very strong, so he can, I mean, he's shown that he can, he can hang with the big guys. Yeah, I don't think he's the problem for Chartres Valley inside, but besides him, they don't really have any guys nearly the size of uh, 
upset players, big guys. Eddie Floor missed the three, tried to get his own board, however, stepped out of bounds. He's going to go to St. Clair. Connor being guarded uh, by Jared Tewitt. Over to Wheeler. Will inside to Nick. And I'll tell you what, AJ, once Upper St. Clair gets the ball inside, it's about as easy of a layup as you're going to get. Yeah, it's been tough for them to get it inside because the Chartres Valley's pressure, but if they can slow it down and really work their offense around the perimeter, it could really lead to some open shots for Upstate Clair. We've seen that a lot in the first half, and we're seeing that in the second half as Will Ross and Nick Staley have got some easy buckets. That's Matty McConnell on the drive. He's going to the line shooting two. We talk about J.J. Khan being good at uh, absorbing contact and getting to the line. Uh, Matty McConnell is just good. And he makes the first and uh, what makes him so good at driving the basket is he's such a threat from the outside. People have to really close out with a lot of speed to prevent the shot, but he really makes people pay. Uh, early on in his high school career, I mean, he's a three-year starter at this point. We assume he'll be a four-year starter next year. Uh, when he was a freshman and sophomore, a lot of times people considered him to be a one-dimensional player, uh, only a shooter, but he is a, a much more complete player as Hayden gives it back to Eddie Floor for two points. And the game is now tied at 32. Off, uh, off the turnover from Upper St. Clair, Chartres Valley. Uh, they'll make you pay if you turn the ball over. Yeah, it wasn't a bad drive by Andrew Wheeler. It just kind of didn't find his target. And they got to make sure Chartres Valley can knock it out on the break. Connor drives in his foul. I believe that was on Jared to it. Wheeler will inbound, out to Gallagher, and he drives to the hoop, just short, rebounded to Eddie Floor. McConnell drives to the hoop, and a nice move, a really nice finish, maneuvering his body around Will Ross, avoiding the contact, and getting the ball uh, to go in the hoop to give Chargers Valley a two-point lead. Wheeler dribbles around, gets an open look. No good, offensive board to Staley. And Connor Gallagher, a nice move, nice finish at the hoop to tie the game at 34. Two and three, no good. Kyle Westover calls for over the back. Uh, I don't think that was the right call. Connor didn't even see Westover behind him, didn't box out at all. Just a good, hard basketball play by Westover. You know, I think you can only call uh, over in the back if uh, the guy boxes out and the guy gets good positioning. I don't think Connor did either of those. And Eddie Floor gets called for the foul. Uh, things getting a little heated here in the third quarter, AJ. Yeah, Eddie Floor got into Connor Gallagher's face and didn't really look like Connor Gallagher said much. No, I don't think he did either. We're right here. And the ref, yeah, he's going to talk to Eddie Floor. I don't think uh, Eddie Floor will be receiving a Christmas card from Connor Gallagher this upcoming holiday season, maybe. Steve. Elbow three, no good. Offensive rebound fought for, but it's going to go to McConnell. Nice crossover dribble, but Staley with him every step of the way. A really nice block. Good ball moving from Upper St. Clair, and they find Nick Staley. He gets fouled by McConnell, who's who's complaining. Maddie wanted a foul on that other end, but I thought that was good defense from Nick. Yeah, the refs were kind of letting this game get a little bit out of hand. There's been some contact they haven't called, and some interesting foul calls. And it's really added to the atmosphere of this game, and both teams see the one thing even more. Nick Staley can't hit the first free throw, as Zach Staley and AJ Gross will check in. Game still tied at 34 here, 5.16 to go in the third. And after JJ Collin actually picked up a technical foul for his third foul at the end of the second quarter, we have not seen him so far in the second half as Nick Staley makes the second free throw. St. Clair now a one-point lead, two of them bring the ball up. Over to Westover, down to Herzer. McConnell guarded by Gross. 
Probably the best offensive player on the floor versus the best defensive player on the floor right now in the final versus Gross. To it, just kind of throws one up there. That's uh, not a good play. Connor Gallagher's got it now. Tries to take it to the hoop. Shoots it out. If you're Jared Tuit, you gotta get contact there. You gotta draw contact. Uh, you can't just throw one up like that. No, he's done that a couple times. When, he, when he just attacks the basket and kind of throws his body into the defender. Gallagher misses the three to it on the other end, hits the side of the hoop. Oof, not a good start to the third quarter for Jared Tuit after a, a good first half and 10 points in that half. Yeah, he played, he scored a lot of points in the first half, but Sarchi's Valley seemed to play better when he was in the training room. We'll see if he can settle down and get the ball into that. Some of the uh, better scores of Sarchi's Valley. That's another steal for Matty McConnell. That's four that I can remember. Uh, very active on the defensive end. And Matty just uh, doesn't draw any contact. Flails around, doesn't get a call. Gallagher will reset. Good defense there from Tuit to knock the ball out of Wheeler's hands. It's been a physical half so far. First half was fast paced, a lot of scoring. This half, yeah, a lockdown on the defensive end. Very physical third quarter here. <laughs> uh, but two, two very good basketball teams. Chargers Valley predicted to, to win the Triple A uh, playoffs. Uh, I think they may. I think they may. I don't think there's anyone that can run with these guys in, in Triple A. I mean. I think it says a lot that Upper St. Clair is able to battle with them. A lot of people don't expect Upper St. Clair to go too far in the uh, quad eight playoffs, but I think that could be a sleeper too. As Connor Gallagher hits a nice three there, and it's 38-34 Panthers. When Connor Gallagher is shooting well from the outside, he is so dangerous, AJ. Yeah, defenders have to respect the fact that he is one of the best dribble drive players in the uh, section. And um, when he's able to shoot, it just creates so many more options for him offensively. Eddie Flores shot no good. Rebound to Wheeler, and Connor will bring it up. Guarded by Flores. Eddie Flores, I think, forcing him right. I don't know why he's doing that. Connor, a nice move to the hoop. Couldn't finish, and here comes McConnell on the break. And that was a really nice move. Maddie McConnell for two points. Maddie McConnell, very good finisher uh, around the hoop. Uh, he did it more in the first, more so in the first half, but that was a really nice play. Yeah, one thing we've seen in the second body, McConnell gets the ball at the other end of the court. He's willing to push it, and he's able to push it quick. He's created lots of chances for his teammates and himself. Gross swings it to Wheeler, gets it back to Connor. It's 38-36, Upper St. Clair, 155 to go in this third quarter. Zach Staley, good find inside the Knicks for two points, brother to brother right there. Zach set up Nick a couple times and uh, they walked out together on senior night. So far they've connected and given up St. Clair a four point lead. Yeah, Zach Staley, really good passer in the high post. Uh, something that uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of him uh, do a lot of passing in the high post, but he's playing really well. Yeah, usually he's on the opposite end of those passes, working it down low, but He's done a nice job so far. Maddie McConnell, another uh, a drive to the hoop. St. Clair's got to help there. Uh, that was an open lane right there. After he beat his man off the dribble, no one helped. Danny Holzer wants a timeout to talk things over. It's 40 to 38, Panthers. It's so far, uh, Maddie McConnell. So far, Maddie McConnell has done a nice job of uh, driving the lane, but Upper St. Clair has to collapse better. So far, they still only have three guys who have scored in any four. Jared to and Matty McConnell and Kyle Westover and uh, Hayden Herzer have played most of the game. They haven't gotten many shots up and the guys who are guarding them, they really need to collapse and limit Matty McConnell's points. Yeah, if you're upper St. Clair, you gotta you gotta put a little help defense on Matty McConnell. If he beats the guy off the dribble, um, you've gotta have a guy waiting there to contest his shot. I mean you can't have you can't give Matty McConnell open layups. That just makes him way more dangerous than he, than he already is. Yeah, he puts upper St. Clair defenders in a tough spot, whether you guard the three or uh, allow him to drive, and I think what they have to do is just allow him to get the first step on him so the help defense can come, but they have to rely on the help defense. And uh, even if you, you lay back on him, he can pull up and shoot. We saw that in the first half. He is uh, he has the green light from his dad, believe me. He can he can shoot that ball whenever he wants, and uh, he's been known to do that. He is uh, leading Char Valley in scoring. 
Uh, I would imagine a game high in points as well. Yeah, his dad plays him off like he's mad whenever he misses, but the second he makes the three, he's yeah, perfectly yeah. content with any shot he takes. Absolutely. Wheeler will inbound, a Panthers up two. And Connor Gallagher, two more. I'll tell you what, that's uh, two straight times where Wheeler's inbound to the ball right in front of us for St. Clair's created offense in the next like 10 seconds. Yeah, Chartres Valley's trying to put a lot of pressure on that inbounds pass, and I don't know if it's one they can really get their hands on. It's created open chances for Upper St. Clair. Yeah, the guy guarding Connor Gallagher on those inbounds is, uh, has not done a good job. Connor's been able to break free on, on both occasions and set up uh, an open look for himself and then an open look for uh, Nick Staley in the first, first inbound. Herzer kicks the floor. Since 84 has gotten Connor Gallagher's face, I think he has seven points. So yeah. <laughs> doesn't seem to have affected him too much. Absolutely not. That's a sophomore talking, uh, talking trash to a senior. I don't know how often that's going to work. 25 seconds to go in this third quarter. Upper St. Clair leads Char Valley 42-38. I think Char Valley is going to hold for the last shot here. Herzer guarded by Steve. Dribble handoff to Wilkerson. Eight seconds. Maddie's got the ball, five seconds. He pulls up, three, no good. Ross flings one up. Not gonna go. We've completed three quarters of play here at Upper St. Clair High School. The Panthers lead the Colts, 42-38. Upper St. Clair, AJ, able to take the lead in that third quarter. What did they do so well, so differently in that third quarter than the first half? Well, I think it's more of what uh, Sharks Valley was not able to do. They forced a couple shots in the first half. They were willing to work in between four, McConnell and Jared to it. And that, that quarter, it didn't seem like uh, Eddie Ford was very involved in their offense. And Manny McConnell and Jared to it forced a couple of shots that upset Clark defended well. Yeah, uh, one thing I noticed about Char Valley this game is uh, I thought they had much more balance offensively. It's really, it's only been three guys. It's been Floor, Tewitt, and McConnell. When I scroll through their box scores on the Pittsburgh Coast Gazette, I, I, I usually see five or six names of guys in double figures. Uh, really, right now, only two guys in double figures. Only three guys have scored today. Um, although those three guys have 38 points. Uh, if you're Char Valley, you'd think that you'd have a little more balance offensively. Yeah, I think uh, Westover and Herzer are both good shooters for them. They haven't had many chances. Upper St. Clair's done a nice job closing out on them. But besides that, they've only checked in seven guys so far for Chartres Valley, so not many other chances there. We've got fourth quarter action right now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think J.J. Kahn was sitting for that whole third quarter. Holzer didn't want him to pick up that fourth foul. I think it was literally didn't want to pick up the fourth foul, and he was a little bit angry that he got teed up. Herzer shot no good. Offensive rebound to the Colts. And they kick it out to Herzer in the corner. Goes baseline and is fouled. He caught uh, Will Ross out of position there. Will Ross charged him from the corner. Uh, nice drive there. Nice head pick. Yeah, that was a tough position for Will Ross to defend. Uh, he was helping out his teammate. He closed out hard, but it was a nice head pick by Hayden Herzer. That's the second foul on Connor Gallagher. And there's the first point scored by a guy not named Floor McConnell or Tewitt. Hayden Herzer on the board. And it's 42-39, Upper St. Clair. As Jared Tewitt checks back into the game. After his good 21 second break. Yeah. <laughs> Makes the second. And it's a two point St. Clair lead. JJ's got it, gonna be guarded by Floor. They're going to bring a trap here. McConnell nearly turnover, and it will be a turnover. Here comes Herzer. Up ahead to McConnell, over his head, and out of bounds to St. Clair. If you're uh, St. Clair, you've got to be wary of that trap because you've got to know that's coming. Yeah, it was a nice pass by J.J. Conner and a good look by Will Ross, but I think uh, someone on Chartres Valley deflected the pass or Nick Staley would wide open for another layup. Conner bringing it up, guarded by Herzer. And they try to feed inside to Will. And if you're Char Valley, you've got to do a better job defending that, AJ. Yeah. And Kyle Westover is 
Had a tough assignment so far in regard to either Nick Staley or Will Ross. The upset Claire's done a nice job exploiting that. Bad turnover there for McConnell. I think he, he's got to go up with that shot. Uh, instead, he tried to pass it right into the arms of Will Ross. And here comes Connor. It's 44 to 40, St. Clair. See if they can work it inside again to Will. Yeah, St. Clair is perfectly content with running this four around one here, trying to get Will open looks. McConnell's doing a nice job helping here. He's creating a much more difficult pass for J.J. Conn to get it in. Yeah, he knows Nick Staley's not a three-point shooter, so he's uh, he's willing to, to sag off him a little bit in order to help down low. No shot foul on Eddie Floor. Down low. That's the strength of J.J. Conn. Uh, he's going to be playing football at Lafayette, and you see that strength. That's why uh, Lafayette won. Very good on the basketball court as well. Able to absorb contact. We've been talking a lot about how Will Ross and Zach Staley and Nick Staley can work it inside. Even J.J. Collin is significantly taller than the guy who's guarding him. Yeah, at six foot three, he's already taller than anyone on this roster. Thomas puts the ball on the floor, and a little floater is good. Thomas Steve able to put the ball on the floor for two points, and it's 46 to 40, Upper St. Clair. McConnell kicks out to Tuitt for three. A big three-point shot there from Jared Tuitt to cut the lead to three. Yeah, Upper St. Clair seemed to be gaining some momentum, but a huge shot by the senior leader of uh, Chartres Valley, Jared Tuitt. Matty McConnell hasn't exactly uh, taken over as much as he did in the first half here so far in the second. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to have the ball in his hands or they off to give it to the senior leader, Jared Tuitt. Yeah, Chargers guy likes playing that two-guard lineup, but early on in that first half when they were really uh, giving it to St. Clair, Matty McConnell was the only one in the game, and he was uh, he was creating shots by himself. I don't think we've, have we seen a Matty McConnell three-point shot uh, recently? I, I, I can't I can't remember the last I, three I don't, I don't think he's attempted one so far in the second half, and I'm sure if he gets the chance, he'll let it fly, but so far, St. Clair's done a nice job of forcing him off the three-point line. Yeah, I've been very impressed with Matty. I didn't know he was able to dribble the ball like like he can, uh, much better than I've last seen him last year. That's not a good pass for Connor Gallagher. Fast break. Nearly turnover, not a good decision by Jared Tuitt. Looked like he had a shot there, but he opted for the pass uh, into traffic. It was the first time that uh, Chartres Valley Press really uh, played with Upper St. Clair. Gallagher tried to force it over top, but it was intercepted. To it, right to the hoop for two points, and it's a one-point game all of a sudden. Uh, once again, no help defense there from St. Clair. Someone's got to rotate over. You can't let uh, Star Valley get easy layups like that. Well, Ross tries to dribble it himself. No good. Here comes McConnell. It's 46-45, Upper St. Clair. Good pass, but Antonucci's going to kick it out. Looked like he had a layup there. I don't know why he didn't take it. Yeah, I think it was where Nick Staley was going to send that into the third round, and I think there was a good chance he would have. To it, tries to drive on Ross. Switch. Here comes Staley. Kicks out to Tuitt, who hits another three. Jared it coming alive here in the second half, and now Star Valley has a two-point lead. That is 18 for Jared Tuitt. Wow, between Jared Tuitt and Matty McConnell, they've absolutely carried Chargers Valley offensively. We've got a timeout for Upper St. Clair. Chargers Valley has taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. It's 48-46 with 4.43 to go. Um, AJ, as we've said, not a whole lot of balance on the Chargers Valley team, but that's, uh, that's, not, that's not hurting them right now as Jared Tuitt has really caught fire in this fourth quarter. I mean, for instance, Joe Antonucci, the tallest guy on the roster, was left wide open on the block, and he turned it down to give it out to Jared Tuitt. And I think this team is a very unselfish team in Chargers Valley. They, they realized who's the best chance to score, and they've given feeding them all game long. Clair will inbound, down by two, 4.43 to go. If you're St. Clair, what are you trying to draw up right now? You know, I would work the ball around the perimeter, isolate one guy inside like they're getting open layups on. 
And right now, Nick Staley being their biggest guy, looks like Chartres Valley switched the two threes out. Yeah. Kind of surprised it took this long for them to try this yeah, out. Yeah, so am I. Hers are into it up top. That's a uh, that's going to be tough for Upper St. Clair to move the ball around. And that's a nice pass from Thomas Steve. Almost an alley oop there to JJ Khan. He comes down with it and picks up a foul. He's going to go line shooting two. AJ, what do you think a win over Chartres Valley as the last game of the year will do for Upper St. Clair's playoff seating? Well, playoff seating wise, I think it's pretty much a given that Newcastle, Hampton, and uh, uh, North Allegheny will be the top three seeds. But then after that, it's a battle of which of the section winners will get the fourth, fifth, and sixth seed. And I think a win will guarantee them the fifth seed, but whether or not how much a loss affects them, we'll have to see. Yeah, Upper St. Clair what we think will be competing competing for that seed with the section uh, section one winner Hemfield and the section two winner Plum. Uh, if I had anything to say about it, I think Plum is going to get that fourth seed. I think they played in a really tough section at section two with Gateway, Fox Chapel, Central Catholic. Uh, right now, I think between uh, Hemfield and Upper St. Clair, if St. Clair could pull out a win here, I think you got to give it to St. Clair. I think they played a tougher schedule than Hemfield. Connell's fouled hard by A.J. Gross. He went down hard. The thing is, I don't know how, how hard that foul really was. Yeah. A.J. Gross just kind of reached in. And, and McConnell has gone on the floor quite a few times in the second half. And that time, I think he just landed on the basketball. He's going to go to the line shooting two with the Colts up by one with 3.50 to go. That's short. I praised their free throw shooting earlier in the first half, and so far, second half, uh, Churches Valley has wasted quite a few opportunities at the line. That second one is good. It's a two point Churches Valley lead. Connor will bring it up. Five on the floor for the Panthers Gallagher, Kahn, Steve, Nick Staley, and Andrew Wheeler. Connor to the hoop, no good. Offense, no defensive rebound for Matty McConnell. He's going to push it up to two. It. Jared to it, dribbling the ball around. 3:18 to go. To it to the hoop. Good ball movement. Herzer tries to drive. Good D by Steve. And Jared to it, a nice move to the hoop. No help defense from St. Clair, and the Char Valley lead now up to four. Chargers Valley right back to man to man after the 2 3. 10 points this corner for Jared to it, and St. Clair really needs a bucket, though. They're letting this game get away from them. Wheeler comes up with a loose ball, and we've got a foul on Jared to it. I don't know what. What that call was, AJ. That did not look like a foul. That was right in front of us. <laughs> he reached in for the ball, and uh, Andrew Wheeler turned away, and he absolutely whiffed on the player. Leaves the one to one chance for Epson Clare. Yeah, not a good call. That's going to send Andrew Wheeler to the line. One on one here for Wheeler. No good, offensive rebound. We got a jump ball. One ref had a foul, but one ref called a jump ball. And the Char Valley parents behind me. AJ, I can barely hear you right now. They are screaming. Yeah, McConnell's screaming as well. I do not think that was the right call. As at first, Will Ross had the ball in a tie up, and then he lost control, and Antonucci had position. Could be a huge turn to this game. St. Clair really needs a bucket here. Uh, Char Valley has gone on a bit of a run. Khan pulls up for three, is way long. And it's going to go out of bounds to Char Valley. Four point Char Valley lead. They have really 
really played better in this fourth quarter. Yeah, they've been a lot more under control, and just because you, you want to push on the fast break doesn't mean you have to take the only shot they give you. And that is a really good back cut there for Maddie McConnell. St. Clair's got to realize that's coming, and it's now a six-point Star Valley lead. As Gallagher is fouled by Herzer on the dribble drive. Gallagher gets the friendly roll to cut the Star Valley lead to five. Really, St. Clair needs these free throws. These are, these are two big ones, AJ. Second one, no good. Lose on to McConnell. Two, it looks like he trips, loses the ball. Connor's got it, and I think he got a timeout. He did. A big turnover forced by the Panthers as there's 1.57 to go. The Colts lead 53 to 48. St. Clair needs a bucket here, AJ. Yes. Yeah, so stay alive. They've had a long draw without a field goal. They've had a couple chances at the line. They haven't been able to convert with those. And I would look to Connor Gallagher here. He's done a great job attacking the basket. And when he drives, Chargers Valley defense really collapsed. On the, on the lane, and I think they have an open shot for either J.J. Collin or Collin to Steve outside the three. I also really like when St. Clair was kind of running a four around one with Will down low. They were passing the ball a lot around the perimeter. They were getting good looks, and then they'd pass the ball down low to Will. And if, they can, if St. Clair can get the ball inside on this team, it's pretty much an open layup uh, with a guy who's probably five or six inches taller than the guy he's guarding. Um, that's something that I think Upper St. Clair really needs to exploit. I think they've gotten away from that in the fourth quarter, but Early on in the third, uh, when St. Clair really increased their lead, that was that was what they were doing, and I think they need to get back to that. Only 157 to go, though. It may be too little, too late. We will see as Chartres Valley has a five-point lead, just under two minutes to go in this game. Five on the floor for the Panthers: Nick Staley, Zach Staley, J.J. Connor, and Thomas. Gets it into corner. They're going to try to trap. Good patience there by Nick Staley. Not forcing the pass, waiting for corner to get open. And there we go. They feed inside, and Nick Staley and the foul. Just what I was saying, AJ. You got to get the ball inside on this team. He called it there, and uh, like you said, maybe there wasn't enough time on the clock to get the power inside, but. Good job by St. Clair not abandoning that yet. Max Davis going to go to the bench, and Thomas as well. A bit of an offense-defense shift as AJ and Will check in. Nick Staley gets the free throw to go, and it's only a two-point game here, 141 to go in this game. Jared Tua will bring the ball up, guarded by Connor. Looks for a possible trap here. Yeah, and the trap worked last time. But I, if I was up to St. Clair, I wouldn't let too much time run off the clock. I'd make the trap. 1.30 to go. It's only a two-point game. To it. Oh, almost a turnover. <laughs> As Connor knocks the ball out of Jared's hands. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Connor. And a bit of an offense-defense shift here as J.J. and Connor check out Marcus McGinnis. I think they're bringing in Marcus the foul. We only have three team fouls, yeah, and yeah. Connor Gallagher doesn't have enough fouls left. Yeah, that's a good point. Near turnover there is two. It's going to go to the hoop. Foul on the play by Will Ross. Only the fourth team foul, so we may be doing this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's only Ross's second, so he has a couple more to give as well. AJ fouls Maddie when he gets it. Uh, Only his second. They really got a pressure here. Look to try to get a steal, not just foul immediately, but Chuckers Valley's done a nice job getting out. Two fouls um, there by Marcus McGinnis, the junior guard. Uh, his first. And I think he's going to check out here for Connor. JJ also coming in. 
for Wheeler. And one foul away. Yeah, I think you're right there. They, they didn't want JJ on the floor there uh, when they were fouling. Uh, he already has three. Don't want to pick up that fourth. To it being guarded by Gross. 109 to go. It's a two point game. Good defense by AJ. Thank you. And we finally get a foul. As Jared Tewitt will go to the line shooting a one on one. Big free throws here. I, I can't even tell you how big these are. It's 53 to 51. Two free throws here would make this a two possession game. Two and missed two and two last time he was at the line. And with the one and one, this first shot is huge for Chartres Valley. It's still only a one possession game. And the first free throw dead on. Now a three point game. Like I said, Claire, when they get the ball in here, either on a miss or a make, they need to attack and look for two, not the three pointer yet. So it gets the roll. And a timeout called by Tim McConnell and Chargers Valley as they lead the Panthers 55 to 51. Uh, tough fourth quarter so far for the Upper St. Clair Panthers. They came in with the lead, and now Char Valley holds a four point lead. What has Char Valley done so well in this fourth quarter? in order to give them the lead. Well, they've really limited their turnovers and the shot selection so far in the fourth has been a lot better. They've had a couple of backdoor cuts, a couple of fast break points. And what Upper St. Clair was doing so well in the third quarter to get them the lead is they were really collapsing and forcing uh, Shortridge Valley to take outside shots and uncomfortable shots the guys on them. And their offense has been a lot more fluid. They've been able to move it around and get guys open. St. Clair, you want to get a quick two here? A lot of, uh, some coaches will suggest you go for a three, but I think it, it's, it's, it's too, uh, there's still enough time left. There's still a minute and three seconds to go. I think you get a quick two here. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I think, I don't know if you need to force the drive early on. I'd maybe pass around the perimeter a couple times and look to lob it inside to Will Ross. Will Ross not in the game. Either Zach Staley or Nick Staley. First and foremost, you got to break this press. Char Valley's been going to full court press this entire game. And Nick will inbound. And he almost turns it over. Hayden Herzer tips the ball out of bounds. As one second goes off the clock, Nick will inbound again. Here comes Connor. Kicks it out to Steve, almost a turnover. Jerry Tooth did a nice job reading that play. Zach Staley can't finish, and it's going the other way to Char Valley. A good drive there by Connor. Connor will inbound. Let's get into Jarrett, and he's fouled. One on one upcoming again for Jared Tewitt. Made his last two, only 46 seconds to go. Two, uh, two makes here, and, and that would be a, a, a really tough deficit here for him. Yeah, if he makes both, you definitely have to look to make a three pointer. I don't know if there would be enough time to continue to get twos, especially against your normally good foul shooting team. I believe 46 seconds to go to it. Not the line shooting one on one. No good. Rebound to JJ. And a possible trap up coming. He gets it over to Connor. And he loses it out of bounds. It'll go to Star Valley. Two tough breaks here. St. Clair's had a chance to cut into this lead. Yeah, I don't think Chartres Valley's been giving too many more chances. They gotta capitalize. Oh, inbounds it to Westover. Over to Herzer, and he loses it out of bounds. It's just the turnover up St. Clair needed. It was wow. pretty much unforced, and Herzer went flying into the stands. Into the stands, into the second row here at Upper St. Clair High School. As JJ will inbound. 32 seconds, still a decent amount of time. Do you still go for a quick two here? I think I think you do. It's amazing. It's still a four-point game with all the chances you missed in the last minute. 
JJ goes to the hoop. And we got an offensive foul upcoming. Yeah, I think that was the right call. He lowered his shoulder all the way from that three-point line. Tough, tough break here. Upper St. Clair, they have had three possessions to get a bucket. And we have a missed layup, a turnover, and an offensive foul to show for it. Can't get too discouraged here. They're still in the game. 25 seconds left down four. It will be a two possession game even if they make both free throws. They get it in. And McConnell yep. up to Herzer. Only 20 seconds left. Over the floor in the corner. And he's fouled. That is the 10th team foul on Upper St. Clair. So two free throws are coming for the sophomore, Eddie Floor. Seventeen seconds left. First free throw, no good. Starkers Valley doing everything but scoring for Upper St. Clair. Uh, they're really trying to keep St. Clair in this game, I guess, huh, AJ? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to believe Upper St. Clair's had three possessions down four here in the last minute. They haven't been able to capitalize yet, but at this point, they're still in the game. Second free throw is good for Eddie Floor. It's a five point game, 56 51, 17.7 seconds to go. If you're St. Clair, you need a three. Yeah. Whether it's Thomas, Steve, Andrew Wheeler, or Connor Gallagher, I think you got to look to get a three off as quick as possible and attack the offensive glass in case of a miss. Really, really tough. Uh, St. Clair has had opportunities to cut this lead. Unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize. And it's, uh, we're staring at a, a five-point deficit right now. It's 56-51. And the scoreboard's gone, AJ. The scoreboard is out. It appears someone ran into the court behind the official table. Technical difficulties. We are back. And Nick will inbound. Only 17 seconds. St. Clair needs a three. Here comes Connor. He goes to the hoop instead for two. If you're leaving that open, you got to take yeah, it. Absolutely. It's tw only 12 seconds left, but it's a three point game. And if you're St. Clair uh, on this inbound, you got to get a steal and then a quick foul. What do you say? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if he would wait for the steal. I'd probably try to foul the guy you want before the ball even gets thrown in to limit the time going off. If you're St. Clair, would you consider fouling not Floor, McConnell, or it? Anyone who has not, not scored yet. Herzer only has two points, but um, maybe get a guy who hasn't shot yet at the line. Maybe he's a little uncomfortable. Yeah, I think the guy that they would sh should go after would be Kyle Westover. He hasn't had a chance to go to the line yet. The other guys have all made free throws. The guy would obviously avoid to be Matty McConnell. He's probably the best shooter I think we've ever seen this, this year. We've seen a lot of good shooters as well. Joey Mascara from Bethel Park, uh, Johnny David from Mount Lebanon, just to name a few. DJ Porter from Obama. Uh, DJ Porter from Obama. They are undefeated as well. The Obama Academy Eagles beat uh, their rival Alderdice Friday night to improve to, I believe, I believe they're 18 and 0 now. Uh, which is a very impressive team. They've beaten some good Whitfield teams too. They beat Ascension Academy in the Pittsburgh Classic at Montour. Uh, so they are no joke. They're a good basketball team. As McConnell gets the inbound with Tewitt, he, he is fouled by Connor, and Tewitt will shoot two. Obviously that's who uh, Chuck is probably one of the ball to go into because their watch out would be their best free throw shooter. Matthew McConnell was passing the ball in. <laughs> Jared to it shooting two. Only 11 seconds to go in this game. To it makes the first. That'll make this a two possession game, and that's, that'll make this really tough for St. Clair. Yeah, at this point, even if they leave you wide open, you cannot settle for a two or three pointer is a necessity at this point. Second free throw is good as well. 
Marcus McGinnis will inbound to Connor. 10 seconds. What the hell are you doing? Connor comes down and gets two. A nice, another nice move to the basket for Connor Gallagher. Probably too little, too late, as there's only three seconds to go. And it's 58 55, Chartier Valley. He's played a great game. He's really put on a good show for the crowd. A lot of the points for him. Not as many assists as he usually gets. He's uh, had to play a bigger role scoring. But uh, here for Upstate Clare, they're going to have to get lucky with the steal. I don't think there's enough time to foul. Expect some of the missed two free throws to come back. Tough, really tough. Nonetheless, a really good high school basketball game. And I think a, a pretty good showing for Upper St. Clair. Um, you've got to hope maybe the fifth seed. Yeah. I, I don't know about the fourth seed at this point. I think you'd probably give it to Plum. They'd probably play a tougher schedule. But I like to think that we get that fifth seed over Hempfield. Uh, section one, aren't a whole lot of good teams in that section. Um, I think you give it to Upper St. Clair. They get the inbound to to it, and he's going to the line. Only two seconds to go in this game. Little little home field advantage there with the clock yeah. operator. <laughs> Looks like a little bit more than 1.4 yeah, seconds. I to agree. Me. I agree. Uh, one free throw here, and this game is is over. Would you Would you agree? Yeah. There's. I mean, I guess you could hope for someone to foul you, but they wouldn't even come in even doing. And that and free throw is good. Jared to it has hit his free throws at the end of this game. Got to give Sharkers Valley credit. And he makes the second one as well. 60 to 55. Char Valley leads. Two seconds left. JJ will bring it up. He doesn't get a shot off, and that will do it. The final game of the year, regular season that is. We'll go to the Sharkers Valley Colts as they beat the Upper St. Clair Panthers 60 to 55.